Who has gazed at the richly diffused light glowing through stained glass and not been captured by its beauty? Indeed, who has not wondered, how did they do that? In a good-sized studio west of Winston-Salem, Al Priest and Brad Brown have crafted a thriving stained glass window business. Today, Salem Stained Glass is known far and wide for newly designed windows, repair and restoration of stained glass treasures, and of course, the installation of both. The biggest majority of what we do here at Salem Stained Glass is commercial work, um, new church windows. We decide on a theme or an idea for the windows, and then we'll go in and produce the windows, do everything from the beginning to the end, turnkey. At the heart of the matter, and a key quality that sets Salem stained glass apart, is the original art from which each window evolves. We have an art staff here that's, I think, one of the best in the East. Derek McHouston, our lead artist, has a four-year degree in studio art from Chapel Hill, and it is phenomenal. We actually are capable of putting portraits in glass. The window Salem stained glass is delivering today is a geometric design that was best worked out on the computer. Artist Phil Hamby greatly compresses a process that used to be done strictly by hand. A window like this probably take a couple of weeks to draw it by hand. It's so detailed. It's um, the advantages to doing it on the computer aside from time is that you get symmetry. Every one of these diamonds is exactly the same. Every circle is going to be symmetric. And they're going to be spaced perfectly, which is another advantage to doing this versus doing it by hand. Once the pattern is printed, we bring it out here and we cut it with pattern shears. Each individual piece of paper represents what will become a, uh, an individual piece of glass. It's numbered just to let us know how many pieces are in it and uh, which, which side's up, which side's down, where they go. This one's got over 500 pieces. There's no shortcutting these steps. The pieces are prepared using tried and true low-tech craftsman's tools. Okay, so now we have over half the glass cut for this panel. Here's the pieces I just cut. I'll lay them here. These pieces will be painted. This design, rather than letting this, we're gonna paint that on there with clear glass with gold paint. And this is paint mixed with water. I use this three-inch badger brush to badger it on there to try to get it smooth as possible. After it dries, Mary Ann Campbell carefully scrapes away all that is not art, leaving beautiful gold patterns to be included in the window. After everything's cut, we'll uh, lead everything together. There'll be a, uh, a strip of lead channel between every piece of glass. It's called glazing. The basic assembly techniques have not changed much in several hundred years. Ready? When it comes to turning over a large panel like this church window, it's a delicate process needing two people. Then they straighten the joints, apply soldering flux, and finally, just a little bit of solder for each joint, one at a time. 
A final step is puttying to add strength, rigidity, and weatherproofing. And then each joint is polished. Well, this job's all finished now. We've just installed it into this door frame today. And we'll take it over to the customer's house sometime in the next couple of days. Some jobs are of a considerably larger scale. Walk in the magnificent chapel at the Boys and Girls Home of North Carolina at Lake Waccamaw and a glorious 12-foot rose window designed by world-renowned stained glass master Rowan LeCompte glows like a multicolored sun. LeCompte designed the intricate work and Salem fabricated and installed it, which Brad and Al consider a distinct and rare honor. Salem Stained Glass also designed, created, and installed 42 windows for their sanctuary, each depicting a scene from the life of Christ. The Pitt County Courthouse in Greenville offered a different challenge. The building had been renovated several times over the years, and the courtroom's hallmark stained glass windows behind the bench were removed in 1968. After reading about their work in our state magazine, Superior Court Judge Wilton Russell Duke asked Salem to design new panels. These windows are the centerpiece of the room. This symbol is the Lady of Justice, exactly as she appears on the seal of the North Carolina Supreme Court. This is a great seal of the state of North Carolina, and this is a great seal of the United States. A good portion of Salem's work is restoration. This valuable and well-known historic window called Angel at the Tomb was created by the Franz Meyer Studio of Munich, Germany in 1911 and originally installed in a Wilmington church. Later, it gathered dust in a storage building before being restored by Salem. The window now is in a private home where it glows with fresh life. And of course, small churches contract for stained glass windows too, some for the first time. The old windows come out of this church in Westfield, and the new ones go in. Soon the congregation sanctuary will be bathed in a whole new light. And speaking of new light, Salem Stained Glass recently began a collaboration with internationally acclaimed glass artist John Kuhn, adding a new dimension to their business, which in only 25 years has become known not only as one of North Carolina's elite stained glass studios, but one of America's as well.